When cutting, sanding, or even spray painting, without a doubt, you're creating tiny particles light enough to hang in the air. You could be inhaling a good amount of that. But I want to capture as much of this as possible while creating clean air. This is a very low maintenance process. All you have to do is replace the filter when it's time. The only thing left to do is to show you how I made this easy to use but portable air filter. I will be using as much of this leftover plywood as I can in this build. This is great being that I can get rid of a good portion of this. As you see, there are many varieties here. I'm not going to be able to use all of it, but I'll use as much as I can. Based on the dimension of this box, I'll head over to the table saw and cut down as much of this as possible. Now I've cut down majority of the parts. Here are the bulk of them. This here is the inline duct fan, the core piece of today's build. I have a couple of these, been had them since around 2015. They're rated at 440 CFM and they do move a good amount of air. My hope is that this can remove small dust particles from the air. I'll pair this up with a 12 inch air filter. With the bottom panel down, I'll take the front panel and sit it beside it. Now I'll take the fan and nudge it up to the front panel. Now as bad as I want to center the fan, being that they have the electrical junction box mounted to the side, I, I want to leave that right where it's at. So I'll make sure I nudge the fan over just enough so that it clears the sides. Now I'll take a pencil and trace the nose of the fan to the front panel. The hardest part here is finding the center of the circle. To do that, we need to find the radius. I'm going to keep it simple. I found the diameter of the circle, divided that by two. Then I took the result and adjusted the compass to match. Finally, I'll set the compass on the edge and then let the other end hit the middle. Now I'll take my homemade router jig and screw it to the center of the circle. I have this adjusted so that the router bit that I'm using is on the inside of the circle. To make this easy on the router, I took off an eighth of an inch at a time. Once I make one complete path, I lower the bit and continue. When I got to the final path nearing the end of the run, once I cut away at the last part of the tab, this is going to be free floating in the air. So I suggest easing into it or just stopping it right before you cut all the way through and just cut it off manually. I did a quick test fit to see how close I came. It was a bit tight, but the good news is the inlet and the outlet seems to be the same exact size. While I didn't catch it in the moment, I grabbed the wrong piece of wood, traced that out, then I cut the hole out. Now this piece didn't go to waste, but I'll show you how I fixed that later. When I got done, I did a test fit and then I realized, oh crap, this was the wrong piece that I cut. I went ahead and cut the other piece, so I'm back on track now. Here I am with the panel that I accidentally cut earlier. This panel needed to have a bigger hole. Rather than throwing this away starting over, I'll show you how I fixed it. I took the center part that I removed, screwed it to a couple pieces of plywood underneath, then I screwed the panel to the plywood strips. This whole section will be removed. Now it's a matter of finding a center, as is, and screwing the router jig to it. Now you know where I'm at, I'll finish routing this opening. The holes were a bit tight for the fan to fit, which I'm perfectly fine with that. I can always use a sander in this case to slowly expand this. I have this drum kit that fits in a drill and it gets the job done. I'll open up the junction and disconnect the power cord. Before I disconnect the wires, I'll tape them off and mark them. I drilled a hole in the side panel to pass the power cord. Now I'll start putting this together. I'll use brad nails to speed up the assembly, but I'll be relying on wood glue for the strength.
The fan is held in place with a firm grip of the holes. While there's a wall bracket attached, I left that in place and screwed it in. Now I'll attach the side. Now I need to frame out the filter housing and without making the box too big, this frame will act as a separation. I would like the entire filter to be able to pull dust rather than the middle section where the blade of the fan is. Something I should have taken care of earlier was routing in this power cord. I made things difficult on myself having to work in a tight spot. All I need to do here is reconnect the wires based on how I taped them off and close this up. I'll finish framing out the filter housing and finally add the back. Now I close off the top. There wasn't a need to remove the entire top to replace a filter. So I divided the top so I can have this removable panel in the back. I was thinking about adding magnets for quick access. However, removing one screw is not too much of a hassle being that I already have this stuff on hand. After drilling the holes, I then installed a threaded insert. You can install this with a simple screw or a knob. And now I'll take the router and put a subtle round over on this. Then it's on to sanding. I use wood filler to cover the nail heads. I painted the box black this way it didn't look so boring. And to be honest, the black didn't add a whole lot of excitement either. I figured one way to add more interest to this was to add a strip of vinyl going down the middle. I did the best I could here to center it up and then attached it. A utility knife spreader and a heat gun was the main tool for this. In my experience, this appeared to adhere better, especially when you have a finish with a sheen on it. I know the thought may be that this will not hold up, but if it doesn't, it's not the end of the world. This is not your typical vinyl, it's actually thicker and you can feel the raised texture on this. So I think there's a chance unless I start throwing tools at it. This part can get quite tedious trying to get all the edge cleaned up and make everything firm. I have a number of these feet savage from audio equipment, I think they do add a nice little touch to this. This is the only thing you'll need to maintain. Put the filter in here and put the cap on. This sort of have a subwoofer look to it, which is on purpose. I feel like it's more interesting with the add-ons. While it would have been more practical to add a handle, it's only 26 pounds, so I figured I'd just keep it clean and just lift it up however I can. Now, even though I wasn't planning on it, I ended up ordering an audio video grill to attach to the front of this. It's just a shop project, but I'm only gonna build this one time, I think. When it come down to this filter box, I didn't really spend a whole lot of money. The only thing I recently purchased was this grill 
everything else were things that I had on hand, including the vinyl, the fan that's inside, and scrap plywood. The fan inside, Bindo is brand new, typically costs between $60 and $80. And you're looking at a half sheet of plywood and the rest of it is just spending time and you get to have a portable unit like this. Now, when it comes down to the selection of fans, I had this one and the one in here. Crazy because I purchased them from the same link um, back in the days, but one of them came larger, which is this one, and this one came a bit smaller. Same exact spec, same everything. For whatever reason, the can on this one is just a bit bigger. The one I have in here is the same exact size as this, the same specs as this. It's just a different brand. This is the one I can find as the latest, so I'll link this one. But if you see a blue one just like this, possibly it's a bigger version than the one I have in here. This inline fan is rated at 440 CFM and you can see the movement of air is pretty strong. What I have here is a variable speed fan controller. There are three position on this. You can turn it to full mode, off, and you can switch it to variable so you can control the fan speed from high to low. I don't have an air quality meter, so I can't check that. I was able to get some dust particles hanging out in the air. I just turned the filter on and immediately you can start to see the particles racing towards the fan. This is approximately four feet away from the filter box. I will likely have a few different filters on hand, one for woodworking, one for painting and spares. If I see that I'm changing this often, I'll likely change the screw for a knob, something that I can do toolless. From a few test cuts on a table saw, I collected this out of the air. If you have dust collection on your table saw, chances are you'll catch a lot of this. Routers, sanders, and circular saws are a couple notable tools that's gonna create these small air particles. And don't forget about spray paint. So if we take a look here, the filter is practically a different color. This is what I pulled from the air after the project I put out in the last video. Making that project and using the flattening jig created all of these small particles. Common sense would say I didn't pull everything from the air, but I removed a lot of it from the air. The best part about this box is it's not only useful, but it's portable. I can take it from the shop to any room that I'm working in creating dust and help keep that air clean in there. Well, that is it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed this. If you ain't already, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to this channel. And be sure to turn on your bell notification so you get notified when I post a new video. Until next time, see you.